Hey, it's Anna. Um, I have a specimen of the Sewillus genus here uh, to show you uh, so that you can identify uh, mushrooms in this particular species group. Uh, this particular specimen is Sewillus hertelis. Um, I will qualify that I have not eaten this mushroom. My confidence in this uh, identification I would call high, but nonetheless, this is not a mushroom that I have eaten before, at least not knowingly. I've attended some mushroom festivals where people have uh, shoved things under my nose and I in good faith have consumed them, inclusive of uh, some dishes that have included multiple uh, Suillus species. At any rate, um, Suillus is really common and it's also in a uh, very large group of species sort of known collectively as the Boletaceae. Uh, so you have Boletus mushrooms, that's probably the most sort of common um, or at least iconic uh, genus in the Boletaceae, but Suillus is also pretty uh, prevalent and we have a lot of them in North America. So uh, the main thing that makes a Boletus type mushroom a Boletus type mushroom is instead of having gills uh, or, you know, um, little spikes or anything like that, the uh, fruiting body has a fertile surface that is sort of like a uh, thick sponge with these little pores. Uh, the arrangement of pores on this particular uh, species are kind of radial. Um, um, and so, you know, in the case of uh, Sewillus, you always have this sort of porous layer. Um, additionally, the thing that really makes Sewillus very distinct is uh, it has very frequently its species have glandular dots. So it's just these little uh, sort of dots that are arranged around the, uh, the top of the stem. Oftentimes you'll also have, uh, at least in the case of Sewillus hertelis, sort of this little, um, you know, ring or little space between uh, the stem and uh, the actual uh, surface of this, of this porous layer. Um, the top of Sewillus mushrooms vary a lot. Uh, the sort of classic idea of a Sewillus is this sort of like snotty bolete looking mushroom. So a lot of Sewillus have these like thick snotty layers and uh, from an edibility perspective you have to sort of peel them off or figure out how to deal with their sliminess. Uh, Sewillus hertelis and some many other uh, Sewillus species actually don't have that characteristic. So this is kind of dry a little bit on the um, you know soft and uh, slightly felty side. You'll also see that it has a lot of little uh, sort of they're not really scabs or scabers. Uh, it's just a little bit of streaking, a little bit of sort of um, hairiness, is, at least that's uh, how it appears. And so it's, you know, got this kind of granulated appearance. Um, final thing about uh, Suillus hertelis in particular, besides these glandular dots, it also doesn't have a ring on the stem. A lot of Suillus species do. And it has this crook in the stem. That's not a universal feature, but that's oftentimes um, a distinguishing characteristic of this particular uh, kind. So, uh, Suillus in general, um, I really think they're kind of uh, delightfully gross in a lot of cases, like Suillus brevipes, uh, the short stem, stem Suillus is this sort of like ginormous snotty thing and is often very convoluted and gross. Um, and it's very fun to handle because you get these big sort of ectoplasm, uh, you know, strands of snot on your hands. I have really enjoyed eating uh, Suillus mushrooms of various species. So, you know, I do recommend getting to know them. And again, the glandular dots and these, uh, the porous surface is, um, you know, really distinct. Oftentimes also you get some brown bruising in this case, not much, but uh, you know, the pores um, oftentimes like they start out yellow, but uh, turn this sort of ocreous color. So I'll stop going on about it, um, but you know, Suillus hertelis and others are uh, ex exceedingly common. And if you're interested in learning about your uh, sort of bolete type, boletaceae, uh, spongy mushrooms, they're a good um, species group to focus on.